Hello, hi, and welcome to This is Private Practice. Today's Wednesday, the 8th of August. It is the 8th of August, and it's windy here in the Blue Mountains. I popped my head outside because I hadn't had any fresh air all day, and the wind did things to my hair. <laughs> That's okay. We tried not to spend all our time preening in front of the Facebook camera. And then we remember this is going live all over the interwebs. Hey, Priscilla, nice to have you awake. Wow, it's um one of those days. I, I just have to explain. I've just finished proofing a um, opt-in and nurture sequence for one of my practice building clients, and it is stunning. It is so beautifully done. I'm so proud of us. I'm hoping that Carol gets on the call so I can share with her my excitement about it. This, this is just going to change lives, and people are going to be so – it's just going to be such a lovely experience for people who often don't feel very lovely. Um, and so big shout out to Debbie Eglin again, who's brought this project to life with all the techie bits and things in the insides of the backsides because, <laughs> you know, we know I'm good at that. So I'm excited. I finished something. I also finished writing my own nurture sequence for over at Purple Co, helping people understand a guide that I wrote for them. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. And that got done because... Anthony, who is the marketing and comms consultant here, started it and he saw how many months it had been up on my calendar, which I'm pointing at over there, which you can't see. And he said, can we just get this finished? What can I do to help? So I'm like, oh, let's do that, shall we? Amber, hello. It is good to have you here too. Excellent. I said I wasn't going to have a particularly heavy client load day today, but geez, it still feels heavy, which suggests to me that um, yeah, I'm, th things aren't great in my brain, which is okay. Grief does this to us. Um, good news, we got the order of service finished. <sighs> That's hard. Now we just need to communicate it to all the people so everyone can understand why we've done things the way we've done them. Probably over-communicating in this period of my life, I am terrified that I'm going to miss a detail and that it's going to be devastating for people. I'm quite oversensitive <laughs> and um, making sure, and I'm probably projecting that oversensitivity onto people as well. But that's okay. I'm human as you are and you've all been incredibly gracious. Whew. So that's why I do these big sighs and these big poofing noises. I've just worked out. I've done that twice. I had an abstract um, accepted today and that has really buoyed me and gave me an opportunity to talk to us about the difference between paid speaking and unpaid speaking and, and why you actually want unpaid speaking in your world. So this is a conference here in Sydney, Australia for the Australian Rehabilitation Providers Association. And to be honest, I was really nervous about putting in an abstract. This is my professional pig body here in Australia and like pretty much anyone else watching this video, I, I get concerned about criticism from my peers. And I have been known to do things differently in my industry. I haven't been satisfied with the status quo. And some people don't know how to take that and they don't respond well to my recommendations for change. So putting in an abstract um, about something that I feel quite passionate about, I, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, what if all the people don't want me to speak? Well, they do, and they've asked me to be a part of the conference, and I'm really excited about that. So that's that's not a paid opportunity for me. That is that is something that I go and I do, and I do it for a couple of reasons. One, I do it because it's great positioning, and I think all too often when we're starting um, in in this speaking, <laughs> people want to be known as a speaker. They don't realise the amount of time and effort it takes to build a profile and build a positioning that allows you to ask for significant amounts of money. I'm talking thousands of dollars for a one hour keynote. It's also really important to understand that, that, that the need for more keynote speakers in the world is shrinking. We don't have as many big conferences and those who have been doing keynote speaking for a long time, who are well known, who are well respected are the ones that have been called because this Speaking game is highly competitive, massively competitive. And I've got lots of friends and colleagues and peers in my world who are all talking about a significant decline and they're looking at other sources of income for themselves because speaking 
getting paid to speak isn't cutting it. I've, I've never sought to become a full-time paid speaker that I, wow, the amount of stress that would cause me, I would be a size zero or double zero because I would just stop eating. I, I would find that incredibly difficult. I speak because I'm obviously a good communicator. I speak because it helps build positioning, which is not the same as brand awareness. When you're known as a speaker and when you've got a reputation for being able to communicate ideas well, then people want you to participate in their events. So I'm speaking at industry events, I'm speaking at networking events, I'm speaking on podcasts. Gosh, how many podcast episodes have I done? What's awesome about all of that is I don't need my own podcast channel, although one's coming by the end of the year, just putting that out there. But I haven't needed one because I can direct people to lots of content where I've spoken and, you know, help other people's podcasts become alive and well because uh, of the contributions I can make and to the, to the people I can send to them that way as well. So podcasting is a great speaking opportunity. And it, the difference between a paid speaking gig and an unpaid speaking gig is when somebody pays you to speak, you don't sell from the stage. Sometimes some organizations uh, will, and I have a customer who repeatedly asks me to speak and always lets me sell from the stage, which I am incredibly grateful for. So I obviously have an incredible amount of trust in that trust bank because that's it is unusual. So when you're paid to speak, you're given a topic, you're given a time frame, and you're pretty much told what you will do when you will do it. And you turn up and you deliver really great quality. Because you're being paid for that opportunity, it's not, it's not good manners, <laughs> people, to then go and spruik off how people can buy more of you. I'm, I'm always looking for an invitation to allow people to connect with me. So I'm always giving out uh, Twitter handles or social media links or a piece of free content, but it's never, ever a sell. There's never a sell attached to that. However, when you speak for free, then I think it's reasonable that we would have some way of collecting names or email addresses or being able to sell a small product, like a lower price product from the back of the room and have a way that people can engage with us and want to know, know more about us. They've just had this incredible experience with you up front because that's pretty much what we bring to a room and it's they people will want to know you. It's They're not going to know you 24 hours later or 48 hours later, we have a responsibility to capture their attention. Remember people, we have the minds of a squirrel. What was I talking about? We, we are so distractible and distracted. If we don't capture that information and, and help people understand, hey, you're interested in me, I'd like to be interested in you, how can I add value to you, then, um, <laughs> Oh no, Priscilla, are you unwell, you poor darling? <laughs> okay, talk to me tomorrow. Excellent. If you don't capitalize on those people in the room, but in a way that's appropriate, in a way that is good manners, then you, you're going to lose a, a massive amount of resource. Now, I've turned up to speaking opportunities where I was told there'd be 100 people in the room and there's been five. You need to be prepared for that. But the way you create intimacy when there's five people in the room and the value you can add because you can almost do a very personal coaching workshop style is awesome. People are going to know you, like you and trust you in greater degrees <laughs> than they were if they were a part of a 100 or a 1000 person audience. So I think it's important for all of us who are wanting to position ourselves, brand ourselves, looking at raising our influence in our communities, whether you are doing this as under your own name or your own personal branding, whether you're doing this as a part of your group practice, it's, it's important that you're seen. It's important that you are known as somebody who is knowledgeable about the topic. So Amber, for example, she specializes in working with really high performing couples who are probably not so high performing in their relationships. So Amber would want to be out there speaking in her community about what the, these issues are, where they're turning up and why just putting them off and ignoring them is not good for anybody's mental health or, or their productivity at work. Kylie, who's on this call, she's an incredible communicator. I'm so grateful she's a part of my team. Yay, Kylie! 
going. She knows how to do this. She's been out there talking about communication, communication, why we need effective communication, why we're not so good at it, and the different styles of communication. And Kylie's great at encouraging people to get to know her and trust her and like her, and she builds relationship with them after that opportunity to experience her. So I think we all need to look for opportunities to do more speaking. They can be on webinars. They can be Facebook Lives. They can be podcasts. Other people podcast your own podcast. They can be conferences. They can be community forums. They can be radio. Don't forget radio. Some people still listen to radio. I'm not one of them, but some people do. Actually, I've done a couple of podcasts recently for online radio. Hmm, that's a thing. Didn't know about that. We have so many opportunities for speaking. And I just want to put it out there that most of us are time poor. Most of us at the end of the day don't really want to sit down and read something that is text or prose heavy, which is why icons and iconography is such a big industry these days. So I want you to think about how you can be communicating, speaking, because it gives people an opportunity to experience you in a much more intimate way and a much more real way because you're not a piece of paper or a screen. So this is private practice for today, a little bit more instructional and some opinions of Jo. Carol didn't turn up, so we'll have to celebrate with her another day. I'm hoping that your week is going exceptionally well. I am working from our city office again tomorrow, which will be interesting as I try and navigate our new rental agreement. Holy crap, can somebody... And um, yeah, I've got somebody flying in who's going to be up, coming up from Melbourne to see me tomorrow. So I'm a bit excited about that. So I'm looking forward to checking in tomorrow before it's my dad's funeral on Friday. So wishing you all a fabulous evening, morning, afternoon. Go do your thing. <laughs> I look forward to talking to you again this week.